The latest Imperfect Paradise, The Castle, one queer hobbyist magician's quest to gain entry into the exclusive world of LA's Magic Castle. I'm gonna get in there because it's a space that's clearly not meant for me. Imperfect Paradise, wherever you get your podcasts. LAist Studios. Today on the LA Report, a check-in on LAUSD's effort to create more green spaces on its campuses, and then a helpful guide for your holiday shopping needs with lots of options for great local gifts. It's Saturday, December 2nd. I'm Julia Paskin, and that's all coming up on the weekend edition of the LA Report from LAist 89.3. But first, here's Adolfo Guzman Lopez with the latest news. Electric vehicle drivers report experiencing more problems with their vehicles than other drivers. That's according to a new Consumer Reports survey. Jake Fisher is with Consumer Reports. He says EV owners are flagging problems with batteries, chargers, and electric motors, among other things. It's not about an indictment of the technology. It's not that there's inherently something wrong with EVs compared to internal combustion engines. It's about the fact that they are new. According to the survey, EVs have nearly 80 percent more problems than their gas-powered counterparts, but the most reliable cars of all are non-plug-in hybrids. In other news, people with diabetes who get their health insurance through Medi-Cal will have easier access to medication and equipment. Stephanie O'Neill of KFF Health News has more. This fall, Medi-Cal began relaxing former authorization requirements that have caused life-threatening delays for people with diabetes. Previously, authorizations lasted six months or less for medications, glucose monitors, and other supplies. Now, authorizations are to last one year from the date of approval and can include all needed supplies, ending the challenges faced by many to secure separate authorizations for each piece of equipment. Under the new rules, patients can receive 90 days worth of medications and supplies at once. California is also formalizing a policy that allows patients to obtain approvals from their health care providers by phone or video. The American Diabetes Association calls the changes an important step forward for patient well-being. I'm Stephanie O'Neill. This morning, members of Orange County's medical plan, Cal Optima, can receive free doses of naloxone which is used to treat opioid overdoses. It usually costs $125 a dose. Cal Optima CEO Michael Hun says naloxone should be as available as defibrillators and EpiPens. In fact, our staff have been out and about in the community and did encounter someone that seemed to be experiencing an overdose. Because they had naloxone available, that individual was able to be revived. The free doses will be available from 9 a.m. to noon at Caloptima's headquarters in Orange. For more information, go to caloptima.org. Meanwhile, the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach announced winners for its photographer's contest last October. You can see the winning photos and the runners-up, which are just as eye-catching, at elias.com. The investigation into the deaths of three unhoused people this week in Los Angeles is ongoing. Police believe one person is responsible for the killing of the three who were shot while sleeping alone in different parts of the city. LAPD Chief Michael Moore said the department has reached out to other law enforcement agencies in the region. To this point, we have no unsolved homicides outside the city of Los Angeles. Yet our work continues in identifying whether there are any other shooting victims of persons who were experiencing homelessness, which are unsolved and may have any similarities to these homicides. L.A. has opened emergency shelters until Monday, especially for unhoused people who sleep alone. Those who meet the criteria can call 211 or the shelter hotline at 213-683-3333. And if you have any information on the shootings, call the LAPD's confidential tip line. More information at LAS.com. And... This weekend, representatives from California are in Dubai for the U.N.'s annual climate conference. And one thing they'll likely bring up is the Golden State's track record on tackling climate issues. UCLA's Kara Horowitz is at the climate conference. California will show up this weekend, I'm sure, and talk about the fact that a quarter of the cars sold in California this year were EVs. So it's really helping to show that reducing emissions can be done and can be done consistent with economic growth. 
The conference is set to wrap up on December 12th, but the talks sometimes go longer. We'll be right back after this short break. On LA Studios How to LA, helping the city's unhoused communities no strings attached. We'll get requests for pepper spray, sewing kits, on top of like food and the other hygiene items we bring. Volunteers step in where the government doesn't, from providing clean water to clean needles. They save lives, and that's a big deal. That's really hard to say in like homeless communities. How to LA's three part series on mutual aid premieres Tuesday, December 5th, wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, it's Suzanne Watley. The L.A. Report is perfect for getting you a quick hit of the day's top stories. For a deeper and broader look at the news, join me for NPR's Morning Edition. Starting at 5 a.m., we get you the day's breaking news stories, local, national, and worldwide, and give you a little joy and delight to start your day right. Morning Edition, weekdays from 5 to 9 on the radio at LAist 89.3 and on the LAist app. Welcome back to the L.A. Report. I'm Julia Paskin. The weather has gotten a bit cooler, but today we're talking heat, specifically how it affects school kids in LAUSD, where most outdoor play areas are covered in concrete and asphalt, which absorb heat. More than a year ago, the district announced that it was going to put in more green space across its campuses, focusing on more than 600 schools that are most in need of those cooler spaces. L.A.'s associate editor Erica Washington has been following this and spoke about it with How to L.A. host Brian De Los Santos. I talked to a third grader at Beachy Avenue Elementary School, which is in the San Fernando Valley. He told me that he likes to be outside to play, but his schoolyard is missing some shade. It's really hot out here. Sometimes I've experienced like heat waves and my feet like burning even though I have shoes on. So let's talk about learning and how this heat issue affects kids in the classroom. Research shows that heat can negatively impact kids' ability to learn. It hinders their academic performance. One report from the National Bureau of Economic Research found that kids who took the PSAT on hotter days had lower scores. And this was much more pronounced in lower-income communities that tend to not have AC or much green space. Here's UCLA researcher V. Kelly Turner talking about how bad the extreme heat we're facing right now has gotten, especially for the kids. So maybe there's a child who doesn't have air conditioning at home. And then maybe they walk to school in a neighborhood that doesn't have trees or building shade. And then they come to school and they also have very little access to shade, maybe no cooling inside. Their core body temperatures are never getting down to safe levels. And that's going to cause them to have difficulty concentrating. And it's going to be very, very hard for a child to learn in that context. So what's LAUSD's plan to fix all of this? Since obviously people want this to happen. In June of 2022, district officials announced it will put $58 million towards outdoor education initiatives, including greening. A few months later, then-board President Kelly Ones authored a resolution calling for Superintendent Alberto Cavallo to develop a plan to ensure school campuses are at least 30 percent green. But Gones says she's still waiting. We need a systemic approach from the district. It requires like a really significant transformation in most cases because just the way that the playgrounds have been set up, it's not aligned to the 21st century environment our kids live in. All right, Erica, I have to ask why has all of this been so hard to pull off? In short, Brian, time and money. The district has raised about $500 million in funds for school improvements through Measure RR, grants, and other non-bond sources. But district officials say they need $4 billion to green 600-plus campus sites. Officials say that they may need to rely on bonds, which will require voter buy-in. Mm -hmm. Also, maintaining natural surfaces takes manpower, so the district officials have to plan and staff for that. Bureaucracy when it comes to guidelines for playgrounds and schoolyards can be a barrier, too. So let's say if I were an LAUSD parent or someone who wants to start pushing for a greener campus, what do you suggest I do? You can actually work with your school principal on starting a green effort if there isn't one already. I would also suggest that you attend a school district greening schools and climate resilience committee meeting if you can. At those meetings, you can meet advocates and talk to board members about the work that's being done in your school or how to start it. 
You can find Erica's reporting on greening schoolyards at LAist.com, and her extended conversation with Brian on How to LA is available wherever you get your podcasts. To help you navigate the holidays, we have brought back the LAist Holiday Gift Guide, a compendium of ways for you to remember your family and friends with gifts that are meaningful and local. I spoke with LAist Holiday Gift Guide editor Renee Lynch, and she gave me an overview of all of the diverse guides put together by our staff. We feel pretty confident confident that if you have to buy a gift this holiday season, we can help you find it. Um, We've got gifts for people who are into plants, people who are into food, and really that's everybody. Uh, We've got gifts for pets. Larry Mantle did a list for us of his favorite LA books. That's an absolute must read. We've got books for people who are looking for green and eco-minded gifts. So we've got lots of great stuff. Uh, Also stuff from local artisans, is that right? Absolutely. If you're into binding that like really perfect handcrafted gift. One of our writers, Bonnie McCarthy, just scoured LA and really found some great artistic artisanal gifts to give. Any favorites? Um, Anything maybe that you would either like to give or receive that you've seen through the lists? Everything on Larry Mantle's list is great. I want to read that list from top to bottom. So that's one of my favorites. Can't wait to read that myself. One of the lists is from our education reporter, Mariana Dale. Can you tell us about that? This list is such a gem. Um, I feel like if you read this list, you kind of feel like everything is going to be okay with the world. It's aimed technically at kids and young adults. It's picture books. She's done such a great job of giving us such a swath of diversity. All LA artists, all LA illustrators, I should say Southern California, actually. Um, And it's just a beautiful list. Are there any books on that list that stand out to you? Any favorites? Yes, there's one that I love. It's called Baba June's Treasure. And it's about a little girl. And it starts with a misunderstanding involving a gold coin. And the girl starts to think somehow that her grandfather is actually a pirate. And so the story unfolds from there. It delves into identity and heritage and culture. And that's one of the reasons we chose it. The librarian who recommended it to us called it both an immigration story and a heritage story. And it's so about a little girl who ultimately comes to learn about her grandfather's Iranian heritage. And it's just a really beautiful piece. I think we can all see ourselves in this little girl because we all think we know our relatives and grandparents' stories, but many of us really don't. And so it's a wonderful conversation starter. You mentioned that uh, Mariana got this recommendation from a librarian. How did she put the whole list together? She talked to librarians, children's book experts, illustrators all across Southern California. And I think at one point she had something like a list of 70 books to choose from. So when I say this list is curated, I mean it is hand curated. Amazing, amazing. And uh, Renee, we're going to talk with you again next week about some tips on how to lower your stress. Tell us a little bit more about what folks can expect on that article that's going to publish this coming Tuesday. Well, so many of us, we wake up the day after Thanksgiving with our turkey hangover and we immediately turn into stress monsters, right? Because we think of all the things that we have to do. And so we're trying to reverse that. We're trying to help people get away from that and figure out how to make this holiday really more in the spirit of giving and family and friends under our own terms. That is Renee Lynch, editor of the LAist Holiday Gift Guide. You can find Mariana Dale's list of picture books and other lists at LAist.com slash gift guide. Renee, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to the Weekend Edition of the L.A. Report. The Weekend L.A. Report is hosted by me, Julia Paskin, and produced by Kevin Tidmarsh and Monica Bushman. Our engineer is Sean Corey Campbell. The podcast is edited by Fiona Ng. Catherine Mailhouse is the Director of Content Development, and our Vice President of Podcasts is Shana Naomi Krokmal. Join us back here tomorrow. You can read more at LAist.com and listen live on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. Listeners like you help make the L.A. Report possible. Please donate at las.com slash join. This podcast is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live. Imagine if you could charge your electric vehicle at the places you already love to eat, shop, and play. Whether you're at the movies, on your weekly grocery trip, or running errands at your local mall, Volta EV charging stations are built around your day-to-day and located in your community and nationwide. All you have to do is check in, plug in, and go about your day. 
It's EV charging made convenient. Download the Volta app to find your new favorite place to charge.